breaking news out of Venezuela where an attempted coup is underway there. You heard that right. Opposition leader Juan Guaido calling for the military to oust the sitting president, Nicolas Maduro. In an early morning video, Guaido saying, quote, the moment is now, calling for his supporters to take to the streets, and many answering that call. Crowds gathered around an Air Force base in Caracas, the capital, and both Maduro and Guaido are claiming that they have the support of Venezuela's military. That'll be the key question. Who is right? Joining me now is CNN senior international correspondent Nick Peyton Walsh. He's been on the ground there in Venezuela many times. What is the latest and how serious a threat is this to the sitting government, government of Nicolas Maduro? Jim, I mean, we've talked about this continuing protest movement inside Venezuela, but today is something very new. We're talking about Juan Guaido, who has declared himself the interim president, has been recognized by dozens of countries, including the US and the European Union, for the first time as dawn broke, saying he was in a military base, standing up, flanked by what looked like to be a Venezuelan National Guard, Venezuelan army, with riot police vehicles behind them, and importantly, an opposition leader who's supposed to be under house arrest, Leopoldo Lopez, to one of his sides, standing there and saying, this is the beginning of the end, this is what we call Operation Freedom. And calling on people to stand up and get rid of the usurper. That's what he refers to Nicolas Maduro, the president, whose presidency he considers to be illegitimate. That is a staggering moment of theatre, something Juan Guaido is very good at, frankly, but hasn't always managed to translate it into something real on the street. Are what we're seeing now the first signs of possibly the military turning. What's startling you're seeing there in those images uh, are the blue armbands that appear to be being worn by Venezuelan uh, soldiers who are sympathetic with the opposition. That's what we seem to be seeing. And the fact that the tear gas that regularly flies at these opposition demos, they often last hours, people throw rocks, they go home. This tear gas is being used on Venezuelan soldiers themselves. See that there. That is very different. I should point out too, we've heard from Reuters and our reporter on the ground, uh, Stefano Pozzibon, uh, saying that they've heard what seems like gunshots in the past half hour or so. Now I should bear in mind that could mean a lot of things, could be blanks, could be rounds fired in the air, it could be somebody, nothing to do with either military uh, taking matters into their own hands. But it shows a, a certain sharpening of the situation which we haven't really seen before. Live ammo is not something uh, I've seen used much. Rubber bullets have been fired in the past. So the big question now is what does the Venezuelan government do? What's interesting to see is their reaction. You have there on the screen the phrase attempted coup. That's certainly what they are calling it. And while they've used a lot of inflammatory rhetoric uh, in the past uh, years or so against their opposition, on a day like today, to say this is a coup, well, that simply just pours gasoline onto the opposition's own fire, potentially gathering momentum for them. And interestingly enough to the people around Nicolas Maduro, they're calling his protesters out onto the street. That's not abnormal, but it is abnormal for them to say, can you please come around the presidential palace, Mira Flores. Now, why is all this happening today? Well, tomorrow was supposed to be a nationwide day of protest called by the Venezuelan opposition, May the 1st, dozens potentially of places around the country to get people out on the streets. Many thought the movement was really flagging. You know, it had been months. They'd had a lot of external support, but really Juan Guaido hadn't translated that. Great as he is on social media at fanning the flames of protest, he hadn't translated that into a real practical action. Is what we're seeing on the streets today a change? We'll know in the hours ahead, but I have to say, I didn't expect to see this, Jim. Nick, help us understand what we're seeing on the screens here. So you're saying, and you yeah. note uh, what is important here is some of those soldiers wearing armbands that appear to show that they do, as Guaido is claiming, support him, support the opposition. Now, the tear gas you're saying here, is that being fired on soldiers by other soldiers? Does this indicate a split in the military now? Yeah, I think what you're seeing there is some of that. Now, from, I can't tell precisely because of the camera angle, but that looks to be around uh, the main airport uh, where we often see standoffs between demonstrators and the military. The military inside often fire out tear gas to keep people away. You get kids sometimes chasing at the fences, throwing rocks, throwing Molotov cocktails, doing what they can. A lot of poverty and frustration at the heart of some of these protests too. What we seem to be seeing there is tear gas there. You see a soldier throwing away uh, that tear gas canister. Tear gas being used against the military. That is startling. This is what's new about today, Jim, and this is what takes us to a new place. No way of proving those people in military uniform on the protester side are certainly Venezuelan soldiers, but there's a lot of them, and they seem to know what they're doing, Jim. Okay, Nick, stand by. We're going to bring in Stefano Pozoban. He is on the ground in Caracas. He joins us now by telephone. 
Stefano, these are remarkable images we're watching now on our air, uh, which appear to show some members of the Venezuelan military who, as Juan Guaido is claiming, support the opposition here. Tell us what you're seeing on the ground, uh, and is there, is there more reporting to back up that there's now a split within the military? Yes, exactly. What we're seeing here is the very same situation. We, military men and soldiers, men in uniform, on the both sides, uh, both uh, with uh, these professors have been gathering here since the early hours of uh, today, and uh, inside the military air base uh, where the forces loyal to Nicolas Maduro are staying put. We're seeing uh, both sides with military forces and for a very short amount of time, shots, a lot of shots have been fired in a moment of tension between the two, the two sides. Well, just a few minutes ago, next to the place where I'm standing here in in Stefano. Caracas, uh, Leo. Stefano, just because it's, it's difficult to hear you, and I know you're in the middle of it there, but to be clear, you said you heard shots fired. Are, are you sure this is gunfire? Uh, sometimes the sound of tear gas being fired can sound like gunshots, but have you witnessed gunfire? Fire shots being fired for just a very brief amount of time. Now this especially is in a tent calm, but for a few minutes as the two Sides were getting closer. There has been an armed confrontation for a very, very short amount of, uh, of time. Mm. And uh, I know the situation has stayed calmer, and, uh, and, uh, and Juan Guaido himself has appeared here on the scene in, mm. uh, in, uh, in Caracas, just a few hundred of meters from the La Carlota military base. Okay, Stefano, we're going to stay in touch with you, continue to watch this. Certainly uh, shocking events on the ground in Venezuela as we speak there. Uh, the opposition leader, Juan Guaido, at least, claiming that the military supports him, calling for a coup against the sitting president, Nicolas Maduro. Our witness on the ground there, the reporter, Stefano Pozabon, saying he's heard gunfire. We're going to continue to follow this story, uh, the possibility uh, of violence on the streets of Venezuela. Nick Payton Walsh thanks as well. He's going to continue to monitor from London.